Hey everyone, this is Carlos. I'm the founder and CEO at Product School. And today I'm here with another founder and CEO. His name is Prashant Mahajan and his company is Zeda, Z-E-D-A. And it's .io, right? Yes, it's .io. <laughs> Maybe one day you guys can buy the .com? I have got offer, but I think Zeda.io works well. So <laughs> optimizing for the right things. But thanks a lot, Carlos, for having me here. I really love the community and I'm glad to be right. here. Um, glad to have you on the show. Um, you guys have been a good partner for, for some time now, uh, partnering with us at the ProdCon conference in New York. Uh, I've always been very curious about you know, the next generation of technology for product leaders. And, and you're running a, one of those companies that I, that I think has a lot of potential to, to become um, later like a lifelong brand. So let's let's talk about it. Uh, maybe you can start by telling us a little bit more about about you. Like, who are you, and why did you decide to start to start this company? Sure. So, with like most of the people who are uh, watching this or listening this, I was a product manager before this. I worked as a product manager for almost seven years. I worked in India, Indonesia, USA, Japan. Uh, four companies, two of them public. Other two are $10 billion and $5 billion uh, have been building products. I actually was a, a speaker, featured speaker with Product School back in 2017. Uh, and at that time, I was in Singapore or Jakarta, I, I was the speaker. So I have been in the community, have been pro building products. But then I realized that building product is very hard. Like it's the hard thing. And we have all the frameworks, we have all the information and all the knowledge, but still, we don't have a right tool to build the products. So that's where I left my job as a product manager to build a product for product managers. <laughs> um, that makes sense. And I resonate with that because I also come from a product management background before I started my company. And there wasn't really that many tools out there for creating roadmaps, um, prototypes, run a um, different type of analysis that it's like there was a lot of these tools optimized for a different type of persona, for the marketer, for the data person, for the engineer. And over the last 10 years or so, we've seen a lot of new tools that are fully optimized for the product manager and the different use cases. And uh, it's funny, but it's true. Like a, a lot of the, the founders of those companies are former product managers who felt that pain. Yeah. Exactly. So I think uh, most of the founders which are coming along are were in product earlier. So we are going to have a lot of great product-based companies in future. I'm sure of that. So your product is kind of meta because you're building product for product people. Um, yeah. Obviously, in product management, there are so many different use cases out there. But like, what is the specific um, use case that you are solving? So... Eventually, we want to be the go-to platform for product teams and product leaders if they have an idea and they want to build out a product, manage the life cycle, we want to be there. But for now, we are focused on product discovery because as you said, there are multiple tools out there. What we realized is every company, every product, every team have their own flavor. But the most important question is what to build. So we help product teams with that what to build, why, and then make a plan and measure the impact. But what to build and why is the biggest question which we are solving for. Well, let's double click on that. It's a hot topic, yeah. product discovery. What are the main sources that a product manager leverages in order to inform what to build next? Here's the fun part. Uh, there are so many different sources. Uh, and as you go and talk to companies, Everyone want to be data focused. They want to keep all the sources, but eventually it's uh, some senior person who says that we have to build this. We want to change that. We want product teams to be empowered so that they can decide that what they are building and why. What we do is we take in data from customers, customer support, customer success, sales, potential sales, uh, product analytic, user research, internal communication, backlogs, idea management, everything at one place. And then we generate insights on top of that, that what 
a particular feature or a request impacts the company what is the revenue impact customer impact retention impact metric impact and then they can prioritize so i can imagine that in order to gather that data that is living in different silos yeah. or tools you are integrating with the different tools right so if you talk about customer success or support i can imagine tools such as Gong, and all of them dev kong intercom mix panel amplitude hubspot salesforce jira slack team email uh yeah all of them okay so th- so that's your angle basically like to integrate with the different tools that provide data and then you are the layer that that creates that uh those insights to make it yes. easier for that PM to make a decision yes and obviously from that insight you can make the roadmap your strategy uh all within the veda we have uh built the entire framework on that topic. got it So in the age of artificial intelligence, I want to yeah. learn more about, I mean, you guys mentioned artificial intelligence on your homepage, right? So what does AI, what's the role of AI in, in this magic that you have to, to, to transfer data into insights? Yeah, so number one thing is, imagine a company which is getting, their sales people are doing 10, 20 gong calls a day. Then there are uh, customer support. Let's take a company, anywhere which is like webflow which is which will be getting a lot of customer support they'll be getting a lot of sales data in their crm they'll be getting a lot of customer success meetings happening which will be in the gain site or some other tool then they'll have internal communication they'll have user research now they won't have millions of product managers they'll just have 10 20 30 50 product managers Now, 50 product managers and 5 million customers, the math doesn't work out. So you need to optimize that. You need to see that, okay, all this data, what does it have a business impact? Because there's an economy in the play, which is right now in a mess. So you want to make sure that you are prioritizing things which move your needle, which is move your business impact, revenue, top line, or reduce your, you know, make you more focused. So that is there. And, and I think that's tricky because as PMs um, in general, we don't own p and yeah. Even CPOs don't, don't typically own p and yeah. But now we're being told to, to provide exactly. ba- value beyond just user value. It's not about yeah. what well, we're making our users happy and long-term this is going to pay off. Now yeah. it's about, well, we also want to see return faster. And okay. clients are trying to step up and show business value. So okay. how do you quantify or what are ways for, for PMs to see in their prioritization process, what are some of those features or initiatives that they should go for first? Sure. So because we have integration with the gain site and CRM, you can pull in revenue directly. That a feature request like someone asks for a Bitcoin payment. What is the customer? What is their revenue size? What is their ACV? Now, the other thing is we have indication with Gong. So you can see that, okay, uh, if we ship out this particular feature, 10 deals will close, which will result in this much revenue. Now, immediately, anything you ship ties down to revenue. Secondly, uh, we have integration with mixed panel amplitude so we can build in segments and cohort. So we can tell you your top paying customers are asking this, your most active customers are asking you, your enterprise, your SMB. So now immediately you are able to not just say that what you said, we have to ship this out because it feels good, but we are going to ship this out because this type of customer is asking this, this is the data and this is the impact which we expect. And this is the company goal. So whatever your company goal is, you can map it up. This sounds, uh, that sounds great. And um, because back in the day, I remember when I started product school, a lot of people would question, like if you can teach product, it's like, it felt like, like an art like that yeah. someone was born with and had these superpowers that would allow them to have a vision and then uh, invent something that everybody would love. Obviously there's much more science than art. And I think, having this type of access to data from a CRM, from product analytics, from other places where you can see exactly who are our top customers and 
potentially forecast the impact yeah. of a new product development into your your bottom line is, is huge. But at the same time, the art is still there, right? Like, I, exactly. I can't imagine you can just put all of this information in an AI algorithm, mix it up, and suddenly you're going to get your perfect roadmap. So, so what is the art piece? How do you ensure that the, you know, the product manager or a product leader is, is adding value in this equation? Definitely. So as having this, I remember there was this one podcast where Lenny was talking and Lenny said, oh, you guys are going uh, planning to replace PM. I was like, no, we will never replace PMs. I am a PM. But what you just mentioned, that people, there's a science and art piece. We hire product managers are the creators, most innovative people. And what they are doing is spending time in meetings, Jira backlog, Excel sheets, or updating people. Now, if you take away the science and operational part and let a tool like Zeta take care of it with AI, you get a lot more time with doing the artwork, really creative work, really solving the customer problem, really making innovation and move, progressing the humanity. So if you have more time and more bandwidth to do creative strategic work and you let tool like Zeta do the operational uh, redundant work that is there. Now to think from this perspective, we are just giving you insights. How do you act on that insight? How do you take the decision on that insight? Which insight you convert into a product? What is the solution for that insight? That is something which still product teams have to do it. We just uncover the opportunities in front of you. Uh, I, I share that view on uh, AI or technology in general, uh, giving human superpowers. Sure, many jobs will be replaced with AI and sure, so many others will be created. And I think for the ones who stay, will hopefully give us more power so we can spend more time on the insights part than trying to analyze the data. Um, yes. But if someone wants to go a level deeper and analyze the data, it's still there. I, 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 exactly. So I'm bullish on that. Now, at the same time, you mentioned product strategy as well. And I'm looking at your, your website and that's a really hot topic as well. Like back in the day, product managers were this mid-level manager at best that would report into a chief marketing officer or chief technology officer and pretty much followed instructions. Now we're, we're way beyond that. Like many, many companies have a chief product officer. We have a seat at yeah. the table and and we have an influence. However, I think that strategy piece is still hard to crack. Like it's not a roadmap, like way yeah. before a, a roadmap, it's important to align on, on company goals and, and OKR. So I'd love to get your take on how you break down product strategy. Sure, so you are correct. Uh, a few years back, uh, there were no, the CTO used to be the CPO. Now it is CPO and product strategy starts way beyond. Product strategy in the end is, I believe, what is the customer problem we are going to solve and what is the business outcome we are going to achieve? And it starts with the business, company goals. And that's where we, I mentioned, the insights which we generate need to map to the company goal. Your goal is to increase revenue. These are the insights for that. Your goal is to increase new users this is the insight for that. Your uh, goal is to increase retention. This is the insight for that. In the end, we are definitely mapping to the company strategy. And we have built a product within Zeta where you can have your strategy, your goals, your initiatives, and then map your uh, features, which are going to help you achieve the goal. And then why do you think that feature exists? What is the insight for that? then you have the insights. And then you can also see the feedback or the data which went into that insight. So you have a clear visibility that this strategy is built based on this data and this is the status. So we have a live roadmap, et cetera. So I, I totally see how discovery and, and aligning with, with company goals is the beginning of, of a strategy and breaking this down into specific goals and then uh, roadmaps or initiatives or features 
it's a good way to keep other people accountable because strategy is not this thing for the C-suite okay. that yeah. is having ideas and then somehow everybody else is executing on, on those ideas. So for that product manager who's not a CPO, let's say it's an individual contributor, um, how can they feel empowered and uh, part of that strategy? Because at the end of the day, some of these things sound very, very big and someone would be thinking, well, but how can my feature or my specific work can really, really move the needle? Yeah. So here's the thing. In order to empower the team, we need to give them ammunition to be empowered. That ammunition is data. Like if you, any mid-level PM or a junior PM says that, hey, we should build this because this is the data or hypothesis backing it up. And it should be part of strategy because this is the company strategy. And this data makes sure that if we ship this particular feature, we will achieve that. Suddenly, they have a seat on the table. It's not opinions because, you know, if we are talking about opinion, whoever has the highest seat gets the opinion. But if we are talking about data, you cannot lie with data. I mean, if, uh, if I'm the CEO or you are the CEO and the PM says that we should not, we should double down on podcast because... 100 million people are waiting for it. You cannot say that, oh, this data is wrong because there's a data, there's a fact. And that's where I think uh, we are trying to empower the product teams that everything is number one, backed by data. Number two is visible. There's a, one thing which I have seen is a lot of junior PMs, and I think you uh, teach a lot in that with the product leadership course, is about presenting their uh, opinion to the leadership. Leadership always want to hear it out and improve, but you need to back it up by data and present. So that's why we provide that uh, flow in the product too. And, and I have a counterintuitive comment to make here, which is as much as we talk about data, data is arguably one of the weakest points for many PMs. I agree. I agree. Um, and the, the, we've been uh, the, uh, spoiled many times. We used to have uh, data teams gathering yeah. that information for us and presenting the report. And now in a whole new time where it's expected that a product manager can be self-sufficient or as self-sufficient as possible and, and uh, go get data. Uh, go, uh, in some cases, uh, prototype something without waiting for a designer or go do discovery without waiting for yeah. a user researcher, right? And, and I think uh, it's all good because at the end of the day, there has to be a certain understanding of how the sausage is made. It's not just about calling shots and waiting for people yeah. to make it happen. But at the, at the same time, one thing I always tell PMs is that strategies is a team sport. And exactly. strategy is not something that happens only at the C-level suite and then we all execute. I, I think of strategy as kind of like you can own a slice of it. And exactly. you can be the owner of that strategy for your future, for your roadmap, and still apply the same type of mindset and define a goal break it down into different initiatives and like keep track of them. Um, I find that extremely challenging, especially in larger organizations where they're multi-products. So then you have to also coordinate different roadmaps. So I'm curious to know from, from your perspective, um, how are you structuring your own product team or, or your, your roadmaps? Sure. Um, so I, firstly, we are a very nimble, small team and we, everything is aligned, we try to keep all the communication. Before answering that question, I would love to add one thing, which is talk to, uh, data is the weakest part. Totally agree. They need to be your human element, like you having that story, that story which solves the customer problem and creates a value for the business. Because, and uh, I remember someone talking recently that how do you, uh, he asked me a question that, how do you define a good product manager? And I said, a good product manager solves a customer problem while creating a business uh, value. And while doing this, they give a delightful experience to everyone involved. So that, that's my thought. And we try to do that at Zeta where me, my co-founder, we have a product team. We work very closely. We have... Uh, Entire team does reads, ship it by product school, empowered by Matic Agan, uh, inspired. That's the first thing. You join, you have to read, uh, read inspired. You have to watch. Uh, there are certain blogs and YouTube. So everyone is a product mindset. 
then we make sure that within the any discussion it's never that i'll tell the problem hey there is the problem but you have to come up with the solution it's not like hey i want this to be shipped out i want this problem to be solved so that is another thing shifting the tables uh thirdly what we do is we make sure we use data so that everything is aligned we have everything backed by data and streamlined you are new now of course it makes sense right <laughs> you 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 drink your own champagne uh, yeah. what, what what else is part of your product stack uh so we use notion for documentation uh and we use jira for developers we also uh are very heavily relied on there's a session tool called zippy zippy.ai they uh any session which happens on zeta we record it and we see if there's a problem most importantly i'll say the biggest tool which i can tell our team rely on is zoom like we try to talk to people hey linkedin or product school community the slack channel we reach out to people that hey we are building a tool for product managers and the best thing is other product managers are always there to help us out they're like oh i'll give you feedback i'll tell you my problem and then we go on zoom record it transcribe it uh, and then we analyze it on zeta i think it's very cool to see more more product ceos who have this mindset by default so yeah. as as you onboard new people even if they are in uh, in other teams not always on the product team they have a appreciation for the product they get to use it everybody in the company gets to use it and understand what's working what's not working and i I've, i i shared that because there used to be a huge disconnect it still is in some companies where engineering teams would be building a product but not really understanding what their product is all, all about they weren't really the users of their own product and not that everybody has to be the user of their own product but i think it's a huge cherry on top if you can be the user of your own product exactly dog fooding <laughs> yeah, i always say drinking your own champagne because you know quality yeah it's probably better but, but yeah um the, the other thing is about you you are now ceo obviously product yeah. person at heart you always be but um how do you structure your time now that you are not only building product um trust me uh, people say product manager is either ceo of the product or mini ceo and all being a ceo is very different because your time is now spent with talking to investors talking to team uh doing the sales and this is one thing which i i have shifted a lot from doing building product now i am doing selling the product which is sales marketing learning about plg uh, doing the gta motion how does it optimize so i'll say 50 to 60% of my time goes in that 20 30% goes in looking forward into the future of product as i say i try less to be involved in the day to day product management my co-founder is doing great job with that uh i try to think how the industry is going how what is the leadership talking about and the third time spent is talking to stakeholders those stakeholders could be investors could be industry leader or could be my team with whom i try to do one on one still i find super important to always block time for product even when the company gets bigger um it's at the core company is the product and obviously as it grows there's more than just product but keeping a finger on the pulse Uh, yeah staying fresh with what's working what's not working what the competition is doing what our clients are liking or not liking and it's just something that even though it doesn't really scale it's yeah. absolutely critical i totally agree i think more than more you a lot of product managers make great founders by the way and the reason for that is because as a product manager we are used to working with different stakeholders different teams engineering design marketing sales so we have that idea and uh, it helps a lot when you become a founder so how do you divide and conquer now with you, with your co-founder as well as with other product 
people that you have on the team? Yeah, so I try to block time for reviewing the product. Every new release which goes out, I spend time re- reviewing it. I still analyze every customer call, customer feedback, customer support ticket that is there. And we do a weekly meeting where we analyze all the inputs gathered on Veda uh, that is there. My co-founder takes uh, leads engineering and product now. I take care of the marketing and sales. And uh, that's how we divide the responsibilities and time. Uh, but at the same time, I make sure that I'm focused on what we have and where we want to be in five years, 10 years, how the industry is going to shape up as a product management. Let's talk about that uh, future of product. It's a topic that is uh, hits close to home. Um, yeah. You mentioned that the vision for your company is to really be that one-stop shop for a product team. And you started with product discovery as the main use case. So what, what are you seeing uh, in, in, out there for, for the product team to evolve and, and what is next for, for you as a company? Sure. So the vision which we started with was enable people to solve problems. That's like, that's how we started that. Uh, if we, if people, if humanity has to progress, innovation has to happen, people need to solve more problems. And in order to solve more problems, they need a better tool for that. And that's where Veda comes in. In future also, the goal is going to be helping people solve problem and that results in innovation for humanity. Now, how uh, I see the future of industry, product management as an industry, AI is going to play a key role and that has been a, a pitch for Veda before even GPT hype. It was make product management simpler and smarter. I think future is going to look like there's going to be a dominant player. They're going to be multiple player, but they are going to be two, three dominant player, product management software, like how we have Salesforce and HubSpot in CRM. We have Intercom and Zendesk in customer support. We have GitHub and uh, Jira and GitLab in uh, developer. Figma and Adobe now being one, but Figma and Adobe in design. We are going to have one, for uh, one or two, three for product management, where which sits in the center, which talks to other stakeholders, some things talking to CRM, marketing, engineering, design, everything. That central hub for product is going to exist. This central hub will learn over time, all the way from the initial MVP of a company to all the way to IPO. This will have all the product data, all the user journey, all the improvements, all the learning, all the growth which company and product have done. And they will learn from the market. So imagine tomorrow if you have to start a company, you already have the definition of login flow. Currently, you can have design on Figma and uh, Dribble. You can have code on GitHub and Stack Overflow, but you have to write a PID but you will already have it at Veda. That is going to be the one part. Second is going to be this central hub will, like you said, art, art of product management. We will, it will help you with the improving the product, like giving you insights. For example, if your persona is 60 years old, make the font size bigger, that recommendation. Currently, how that happens is you ship out a product, you do user research, you do user testing, you gather data, then you uh, learn from it. But this system will already know what is a good product. It will tell you, hey, your persona is 60 years old, make font size bigger. Your persona is kids, education app, make make it uh, sexual content prohibited. These are the filters you should apply. So it will make the product better. And yesterday I was talking to my founder I would want to build a you know, future where you can analyze the permutation combination that if there are five problems and there could be five solutions for each problem and there could be five ways to launch each solution. So it's a 125 permutation combination. Imagine if I can 
have all the data of the product company user market and i can tell you what is the most optimal problem which you should solve this is the most optimal solution and this is the most uh, probable outcome it saves a company millions of millions of dollar and it speeds up the innovation for entire human population i can't wait and um, as you said before it also doesn't mean that it's going to replace the the yeah, yeah. but i think having those superpowers it's would be huge like i've seen part of this evolution happen already and i agree with your take on hopefully what well, it should happen but back in the day there wasn't technology for pms now there is that technology is much more visual than ever so it doesn't really require a specific technical background or data background design background in order to build something building is yeah. easier if you will you now all of these tools are not only more visual they are also providing templates and uh, automatic ways to get to value faster exactly. and i think adding that inside layer or additional intelligence to it to not just help you build with some templates but actually provide real time recommendations based on your own specific context is what yes. can really lead to bigger business value and your product is different i uh, this is one by the way learning building a product for product managers that every team works differently every company every product every persona is different process is different so giving a context and insight specific for your problem your icp your domain your culture and your vision is going to be game changer prashant it's been a pleasure to learn with you thank you so much for your time thanks a lot carlos i hope uh, this goes great and i look forward to the october conference